The Google Ads algorithm is one of, if not the most complicated algorithm in the entire paid media landscape. The algorithm itself has changed so drastically with the introduction of performance max, broad match keywords, the different variations of match types that have been introduced in the last few years as well. This algorithm is not completely a black box. While there's definitely certain things and complexities that we definitely will never know, the reality is that you need to understand the fundamentals of this algorithm to ever manipulate it and actually give it what it needs to drive the maximum return for all e-commerce businesses. There are essentially six elements that are gonna play into maximizing your return on ad spend or really just maximizing your overall efficiency on Google Ads. First, we have intent. Second, we have relevance, which drives to a CPC. Then we have CPC, also known as price, multiplied by your conversion rate, which drives to a cost per acquisition, and then adding average order value, which multiplies to a return on ad spend. The core of this comes into these six different charts and how these all play together to ultimately decide if your ad is is more important than anyone else's ad and what the price of your ad needs to be based on not only how you set it up, but where it drives to. The most critical part of any ad placement is your relevance. I know a lot of people are gonna view relevance and think that it just has to do with their headlines. It just has to do with their primary text. It has to do with literally everything. Relevance is the name of the game when it comes to Google. So for this example, we're gonna use running shoes. If you are selling running shoes, you know right off the bat that there are a bunch of competitors that are selling running shoes. There's Nike, there's Adidas, Uggs. You can name probably a hundred more if we took a few minutes. So now Google needs to determine who is the most relevant person or who is the most relevant advertiser that deserves the first spot for running shoe. Let's say right off the bat, someone types in running shoes on Google. And just as we expected, the very first result is Nike. So Google is determining that Nike is the number one result for running shoes. So what's happening here is there's dozens of advertisers who are bidding on the same product that you own, in this case, running shoes. All of these advertisers that we've marked off here all have different relevance. Relevance is determined by how likely that person is to actually enjoy the experience on your website. Basically, are they bouncing from the site quickly? Are they doing the actual conversion goal that you have set in your Google Ads account? We have a brand A and maybe their relevance is low. We have brand XYZ and maybe their relevance is right in the middle. And what eventually happens is all of these get graded in some way, shape or form. And we kind of create this chart where we had all the brands over here and eventually they rank into some sort of situation. What we have here, our very top line that we've marked down here, this is the winner. This is the most relevant brand or the most relevant advertiser for the specific term that we're bidding on. So most likely they've done a few really, really great things. First, they probably have perfect headlines, perfect primary text. Their ads are set up in a way that are really engaging towards the running shoes. That's the first step of relevance. Actually, what you can modify on Google. The second step of relevance is the website is extremely relevant to the term running shoes. You probably see running shoes on the collection pages. You're actually selling a lot of running shoes. You see running shoes on the home page, not only written, but actual pictures of running shoes. Then it's also taking all your history and it's thinking about have people who have clicked on the term running shoes before and have typed in the word running shoes before clicking on the site, staying on the site and hitting the conversion event that the advertiser actually wants. So is it a good experience? This is what ranks them super high in relevance. The next step is the intent of the user. The intent of the user is literally a person by person basis. This has been the biggest change in all of advertising over the last two to three years. So old school advertising, you would just take the keyword and everyone would bid on it. And then you would have your relevance and that would create your cost per click. So you would have a very simple formula, relevance equals cost per click. Now you have intent times relevant gets you your cost per click. So what we have here, instead of just relevance equals CPC, we have relevance relevance times intent equals CPC. What happens with intent? Intent looks like a much different graph than relevance because intent is individualized. We all, when we go into Google, we all log in to our Google Chrome or we log into our Google browser on our phone. Most people are running on a Gmail or something connected to the G Suite, which means that everything that we have ever done in Google is saved. Google knows all of my history. They know all of my buying behavior. Google knows what I'm gonna do maybe before I even do it. Google might even know that I'm in the market for running shoes before I 
even know I'm in the market for running shoes based on the last time that I bought shoes. That's crazy to think about, but it's true. The data is extremely powerful. The intent here is going to use all of the signals based on how I normally act versus how I don't normally act and how I'm acting today. When it comes to intent, you have high intent, which is at the top here, and you have low intent, which is at the bottom here. All you have here are people placed at different random intents. And as your journey goes on, as you are searching on ads, Google is identifying people who have very high intent and they're identifying people who have low intent. Guess what? The people who have very, very high intent, they cost more. Just to give you a preview of what's coming, if you are just bidding really, really low, you're going to get a lot of these scraps down here. You're going to get a lot of people who have very, very, very low intent to actually purchase, even if they're typing in those keywords. Where you get really high intent, these cost a ton, is going to be at the very top. You might have to pay two to three, four times higher in terms of a cost per click, which is why the maximized conversions and maximized conversion values, automated bidding strategies tend to work better these days. We now have our relevance and we have our intent. We have someone who types in running shoe. That person types in running shoe and a bunch of advertisers show up. The first advertiser has the highest relevance. That means it's actually cheaper. So this is a lower cost per click. If you have a very, very high relevance, you get a very, very cheap click. High relevance equals low CPC. Low relevance equals high CPC. The opposite goes on intent. Intent is perfectly correlated. The higher the intent, the higher the CPC. The lower the intent, the lower the CPC. CPC, by the way, is cost per click. It's the cost that you need to associate with everything that goes on in the Google ads world. So if I'm advertiser number one and I have the highest relevance across all of my competitors, Google thinks I'm number one. I'm the most relevant website in my category. And I want to go after the group of people that are the most high intent to it's going to be a straight line right across. We're paying a high CPC to capture the highest intent people. So let's just pretend we're just going to make up CPC costs. We're going to say that these people on average cost 10, these people cost one. And because I'm the highest, we start with a multiplier of one. One times 10 equals 10. That's my cost per click. If I were to go after the really cheap people, then it's going to be one times one equals one. If I go after the mean and these people have a multiplier of five, one times five equals five. It really, really depends on how relevant you are. So if you are looking somewhere in the middle, you're one of these advertisers, which most people are not at the top. Most people are not at the bottom. Most people fall in the middle. Instead of running on that one multiplier that that top advertiser was essentially able to bid on, you are now running on a three multiplier. We're all the way at the bottom. They're running on a 10. Let's just say you're in the middle. You're running on a three, or even if you're running on a five. So now you have a relationship where, because you're in the upper middle here, you're spending a three multiplier, three times 10 equals, you have to pay $30 for that click. You have to pay 15 for this click and you have to pay three for this click. You can quickly see how critical relevance is. This is obviously why in the Google platform, all your settings need to be perfect. The one factor that I don't have in here is your conversion rate based on intent. So if we take our same lines of intent. The higher your intent is, the higher your conversion rate is, which means it's actually worth it for you to pay a premium. Because if you go for the very low intent consumers, they might have a 0.1% conversion rate, which means they're never worth it. Okay. So we have our four categories. So first low relevance is going to cost us a lot. We're going to have to pay for the fact that we are not very relevant compared to our competitors. So I'm going to give this one two to three dollar signs. And we have low intent, which is going to be really cheap. On the second side here, we have high relevance. So we get a positive multiplier for that. And we have a low intent, which is going to be cheap as well. Meaning our cost per click is going to be really, really cheap. Then here we have low relevance. Again, this is going to cost us a lot because we're not ideal compared to our competitors. And then we have high intent, which means that we're targeting very expensive people. Ultimately, this is completely fine because we need to be able to target people that are going to convert the best. And then finally, we have high relevance, which is going to be cheap because we are the ideal advertiser and we have high intent. Yes, they're going to cost a lot, but they're not going to cost as much as they would have cost us. For conversion rate, the most important part is that the high relevance is going to equal a high CBR. Every time we are having higher relevance and higher intent, we have more effective cost. We have more effective conversion rates. Everything gets better with higher relevance. I mentioned here before, price times conversion rate equals CPA. So if you're getting a CPC, say $4, and your conversion rate is 1%, then you can determine how many 
clicks you're going to need to drive a 1% conversion rate and if that's good enough for what you need to do. Now, if it's not good enough, if this equals the wrong cost per acquisition for you, we're taking a cost per click of four. We have a 1% conversion rate. This means that for every 100 clicks equals one conversion. If we need 100 clicks to drive one conversion and our clicks cost us $4, so we just take four times the number of clicks equal 400. That means we're gonna have to spend in this formula $400 to drive one conversion. So return on that spend quite simply is just your overall revenue divided by your overall advertising cost. So your ROAS in this case, where this is factoring into the Google algorithm is your price times your CVR, that gets us our CPA times average order value. The higher your average order value most likely means higher intent. What we tend to see is higher intent folks have higher average order values. Lower intent have lower average order values. Second to that, higher relevance in your brand. So when your pages are optimized, when your speed is optimized, when your headlines are accurate, when your quality score in your Google Ads account is 10 out of 10 or 100%, you tend to see average order value increase because as your relevance increases, your average order value increases because you are now creating a perfect experience for a consumer. So our average order value where we're getting the most high intent people who have a higher AOV and high relevance equals high AO. Here's what you all came for. How the heck do I set my targets and what does setting targets do? When you set your targets in Google ads, you're going to notice that depending on how you set your target, you get different spend volumes and you get different keywords that are being hit. This is especially applicable for some of the new campaigns like performance max, standard shopping, even non-branded search with broad match keywords. Okay. So let's say this here is a five X target ROAS. This here is a one X and up here is a 10 X. What this means is that there's a whole whole lot of people who are biddable in this range. There's a whole ton of people down here who we can capture for a 1x return on ad spend. I know here if everyone just sets their maximized conversion values or their max conversions to either no target or just a 100% target, you're going to get a lot of volume. You're going to get conversions that are going to flow in. The problem is these are generally not profitable. Everything to a certain extent becomes not profitable. So you need to first find where is the point that I'm profitable. Usually for business, in the e-commerce space, this is tending to happen around the 2X mark. 2X means it could be a break even. It might be different for your business. Let's just pretend a 2.5, this is gonna be our break even. We can essentially determine everything that I have highlighted down here in yellow is not profitable for our business. Now, what this means is we need all of our business to be 2.5 and above. So here's the problem with setting a target return on ad spend. If you set your target return on ad spend to 2.5, which is your ideal spot, that is where we are gonna break even your comfort with that. If you set to 2.5, you are going to get conversions above it. If you only got conversions above 2.5, then your return on ad spend is going to be four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. It's going to be way higher. So two things happen. You're going to get conversions under the 2.5 and it's going to average to the 2.5. Now, when you get these conversions under the 2.5, some brands might say, I don't care. As long as my average is at 2.5, then I'm good. If you're just in the starting stages, I don't mind you doing this. If you're scaling your business and you're focused on EBITDA. If you're focused on profitability, it's a much, much different game. These are just straight up cost centers in your business. You are losing money. You need to set your target return on ad spend above the threshold where the averages mostly aren't 50-50. Because if you're 50% of your conversions are above the 2.5 baseline, 50% are under the 2.5 baseline to get you a 2.5 average, 50% of your new conversions, your new people that come in the door are not profitable for your business. So you then need to set your target above the 2.5 mark. Even if you want 2.5, you might need to set to a three because then yes, we'll have some come in at under 2.5. We'll have most come in over over 2.5, we're going to have these guys who fell right at the three mark be above our 2.5. But in Google's eyes, these are actually weighing down the target, meaning Google's going to have to work harder to beat this three now because these are slowing down your average. But for you, these are profitably within this window. So that's the first part of this. That's just setting your targets. The second most important thing to think about here is what terms are actually available at each of these targets. We talked about running shoes. We determined that the middle relevance got us a three multiplier. We multiplied that by the intent of a very high consumer, which got us a $30 cost per click. We kind of learned how our CPC is priced. Then we figured out our conversion rate and our average order value, which are mostly factors on our side that play into our target ROAS. The real question here is where is the baseline for running shoes? Where does that baseline play? So two things happen when you set your targets to different locations. If you set your targets really, really low, Google's able to cast a really wide net. They can say, forget just running shoes. So at the very 
very tippy top, it might be terms like running shoes. Other terms, it might be like Nike because you are Nike. It might be your branded terms when you're setting your targets at the 10 level. It might be Jordan because Nike owns Jordan. When you're setting your target return on ad spends at the 5X level, you get to play with a different competitive set. Up at the 10X level where you're the number one most relevant advertiser and you're asking for a really, really, really high target of 10X, you have to play with the most lucrative keywords. You have to play with the highest intent people. Now at the 5X, things change. You're able to broaden your reach. So now instead of just these three terms, there might now be 10 or 15 terms that are profitable enough for Google to bid on. What this might look like is a more variety of different terms. It might be green shoes. It might be yellow shoes. It might be basketball shoes. It might be running shoes. It might be track shoes. Each of these lines represents a new keyword that you're now able to bid on that is vastly different than the most high converting keywords. So because we're able to spread a larger net, we could acquire more customers faster. This same logic applies all the way down the board. If you set your targets too low, if you set your targets at the 1x mark, instead of just hitting red shoes, yellow shoes, green shoes, Google might say, this is an athletic wear brand. Seems like they have in the accessories portion of their business, some socks. The average order value on our socks is $10 compared to shoes, which is $100. We don't want socks to be advertised. Now there's ways around this, but if you set your targets too low, Google's going to advertise the wrong products to the wrong people at the wrong time. If you set your targets too high, Google's going to advertise aggressively to only the most high intent users on the most lucrative terms for you, but you're going to be heavily limited in how many people you can reach. In fact, if you set your targets too high, you might not reach any. If you find that sweet spot where you need to spend, as I mentioned, like setting your goals, not just because your friend told you, but setting your goals based on what your business actually needs, then that's a different game. Now you're going to fall into a place where you have medium reach, medium intent, high competitive set, because there's going to be a lot of people here, but medium reach and medium intent might actually mean steady flowing conversions at a cost that you can afford. Once you set that target in that way, Google is of course going to still bid on Nike and Jordan for you, but they're also going to bid on substantially more terms to drive more consistent conversions for you. I hope this was valuable. If you want to understand the way that we like to structure all of our ad accounts specifically for Google and how to actually set your ad accounts up based on how much you're spending today. So whether you're literally starting at zero today, all the way up to hundreds and hundreds of thousands of dollars in spend, exactly the way we set things up for our clients. There's going to be a video right here that you can click. It's also going to be down in the description below. Let me know if you have comments. I will try to reply to all of them and I will see you all in the next video.